Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've had people asking me about a concept called corner crossing uh, the last few months. It's been in the news and a story popped up, I believe yesterday, uh, about it. So uh, Greg sent me notes and Steve, check this out. And corner crossing is the concept that let's suppose you've got a large piece of land and you were to cut it in four pieces, which can happen, right? So different people buy these four squares. Let's assume that you've taken one big square and cut it into four squares, okay? Two lines, north, south, east, west. So you've got four squares, one, two, three, four. So if you owned square one and square four, you could theoretically walk over the corner of one square and step over onto the other corner of your other square and keep walking. And you'd say, yeah, perfectly legal because I was on one of my squares and I stepped onto another one of my squares and I kept walking. But as people point out that if you look at that intersection of where those lines cross, okay, the intersection where those lines cross is actually in geometry, it's a point, it's a point. And so the two squares that you don't own, square two and square three, to step over from four onto one, you are passing over those two squares. It's impossible not to, unless, of course, you don't have any width. <laughs> now, you might say, but Steve, seriously, it's such a small... But that's not the point. The question is, as a matter of law, when you step from one square onto the other square without touching either of these squares, but passing over them, because if you were to put sensors at the exact corners where those two corners touched, looking straight up, you did pass through them. And as you should know, if you own a piece of property, you own not just the dirt, but the space above the dirt. That's why you get to build things on it, okay? So theoretically, for instance, these people on square two and square three could build a fence and their fences would actually touch. And then you couldn't just step over. So there's a lot of places, I guess, out west where this becomes an issue because hunters and other people want to go outside and enjoy the outdoors will get a map that shows where state land is. And they'll find a weird checkerboard pattern where the state owns this square and the state owns this square. But this is private and this is private. Well, you walk the corner of this state-owned square, and you step on that, and you keep walking. And then, of course, the people who own these two, if they find out about it, can complain. So that's the issue of corner crossing. And the story that came down recently is a jury found four corner crossing hunters not guilty of trespass. So the hunters were put on trial because they had crossed over a corner like that, and one of the landowners who owned the piece that they had to technically step over to get onto the other piece of land, said, you guys are trespassing. So Angus Thurmer Jr. wrote the story for wyofile.com, W-Y-O, like the state of Wyoming. It took less than two hours for the panel to acquit public land hunters of violating uh, Eshelman's Elk Mountain Ranch. And Eshelman is part of the story here. He's the guy who owned the private property where he says these people stepped over his land. After less than two hours of deliberation Friday, a Carbon County jury found four Missouri hunters not guilty of trespassing for corner crossing at the Elk Mountain Ranch uh, last year. The uh, panel had six people on it, three women, three men, returned the not guilty verdicts on criminal trespass charges and on an alternative theory of trespassing to hunt. Now, the four defendants hugged one another and their attorneys after the uh, Judge read the verdicts at about 2.30 in the afternoon. It was the third day of trial. Jurors did not comment, and they left the temporary courthouse, so we're left to speculate as to why they found these people not guilty. Now, corner crossing involves stepping from one piece of public land to another at the common corner with two pieces of private property, all arranged in a checkerboard pattern of alternating ownership. And it can be stepping from one piece to another piece of public property. You could theoretically be stepping from your own property to someone else's property uh, where you have permission to be there and, and so on. But the point is that you're, you're stepping over an intersection of corners like that or where the corners touch. The hunter's attorneys said that the prosecutor never produced evidence that the four had touched the private land of Fred Eshelman. Now, again, trespassing doesn't require touching. 
But that could be an important point because here's the thing. Trespassing is when somebody goes onto someone else's property or interferes with their, with their use of the property or does something contrary to the ownership rights of somebody else. And I, as the owner of a piece of property, have the right to exclude people from it. So if I put no trespassing signs up, and some states require those before you can enforce trespassing, unless you warn somebody, and the sign can count as a warning. So if somebody, let's suppose that you put up no trespassing signs, you actually became that person who lined your property with no trespassing signs, okay? A wall of no trespassing signs, but the property is still there. It's just that these signs are everywhere. And someone's walking by your property, and they trip and fall, and they put their hand on your property temporarily to stop their fall, and then they straighten back up again and keep walking. Technically speaking, putting that hand on the property and actually falling over the property line was trespassing because that person went onto your property without your permission. But it's such a trivial trespass. It's so de minimis. Did they hurt anything? No. Did they do it on purpose? No. Did, did, did they cause any harm? No. Did they mush the grass down? Turns out, no, you can't even see where they touched the grass. Could they be prosecuted for trespassing? Theoretically. Would a jury convict them? Probably not. So that's the thing, is if they didn't touch the property, okay, but they did pass over it. At least that appears to be what they were saying. So the prosecutor said stepping on private property is not necessary to convict Property ownership involves three dimensions. Using a block of Duplo Lego-style bricks in two colors, the prosecutor illustrated the concept of checkerboard ownership in three dimensions, saying the law is you own the airspace. Land ownership is not just the dirt, it's the airspace above. You don't have to touch the land to be convicted of trespass. That's true, but you've got to get a jury to agree with that. So the men must have violated the airspace above Eshelman's property when they crossed the infinitely small point at the corner, she said. And by the way, they didn't just cross that point. It depends on how big these guys are, right? So if you're this wide, you violated that much space. A body is bigger than the point, she said. All of their bodies were over private land. When you break the plane above a property boundary line, you are entering their property. Along with property ownership comes the right to exclude others from that property, she said. She proved the necessary elements for conviction, she claimed, including that the men knowingly entered private property after receiving notice not to trespass. The defendant's actions in this case are brazen, she told the jury. Now, the defense attorney painted a picture of a ranch owner who is a wealthy businessman uh, as would-be king of the mountain, the 11,000-foot-high game-rich peak where this happened is largely surrounded by the man's ranch property, but a number of mile-by-mile mile U.S. BLM sections, as well as state-owned sections, lie within the ranch boundaries. The hunters set up camp on a public parcel, accessible by a county road, and then corner across to reach other public lands where they shot what they were hunting in the fall of 2021. Eshelman, they say, used his money, clout, and influence to get the prosecutor to file charges. So the attorney for the defendant says, referring to the man who owns the property, he believed the whole mountain was his and that no one but he was allowed to be there. Like a king, when he hears there are some regular people on the other side of the mountain, he said, go track them down, arrest those men. He sends his helper to go call the county attorney's office and here we are. The state told you the law was clear on this. So... Um, he says, however, that the uh, state law is not quite so clear because apparently it took a while for citations to be issued because there were people discussing whether or not this is illegal. Neither a Wyoming Game and Fish Department warden nor a county sheriff's deputy cited the men when they investigated the incident at the time. Game and Fish lacks authority to cite for criminal trespass and has a policy not to cite under the trespassing to hunt statute in corner crossing cases. Instead, Corner crossing cases are forwarded to the county attorney for consideration of charges. Uh, the warden submitted a report to that office, who later directed a deputy sheriff to cite the hunters. Another defense attorney outlined how that indecision demonstrated the law was unclear and that maybe the hunters did not knowingly enter private property after being notified not to trespass. 
He asked the jury members to consider how such convoluted considerations would seem to them if employed when they were pulled over for speeding. Such an instance, have any of you been told, oh, I'm going to call the county attorney's office and I'll get back to you? Uh, one of the defense attorneys said the hunters heard from a deputy that game and fish wouldn't cite them for corner crossing. They heard a deputy himself say he wouldn't cite them, and a law officer said most of Wyoming's county attorneys won't cite for corner crossing. Uh, and then he said, it's clear as mud. Uh, and that's referring to the trespass laws in that area as they relate to corner crossing. So here's the thing. The jury found these guys not guilty. They were charged. And I know a lot of people out there are going to say, Steve, this right here is trivial. These guys should not be charged for that. But let me point out one other thing, simply because as an attorney, people in my office, I often say, well, let me make sure that you understand every possible ramification here. If the people who owned that private property cannot enforce people corner crossing against their wishes, they could fence it, meaning that they could go out the corner and build a fence on their property, other person builds a fence on their property, and you can't get through because the corners of the fences would be like this. And you'd say, but that's going to cost a ton of money to fence all these gigantic parcels. They don't have to fence the whole parcel. It's got to fence the corner. Because if I own the corner of this piece of property, I can put up a fence. Oh, I don't know, 10 feet. And the other person put up a fence 10 feet. And you can't get through. I know what you're going to say. you say, Steve, I'll go around it. Eh, you're trespassing. See? And that's, <laughs> that's the point. And don't say you can climb the fence because I can put razor wire up there. So my point simply is this. That there is technically the space above the land that the person's got to go through to cross at the corner. Technically, that is trespassing. The fact these guys are found not guilty, if I had to guess, the jurors in the jury room during deliberation said, let me get this straight. We've been here for three days of trial because some guys stepped over someone else's property. Not guilty. So... It would be a trivial trespass, uh, and, and I'm the first to say that. But the bigger question, of course, is what happens if this notion here leads to people fencing off the corners of their property to keep people from corner crossing? And that could happen also. So it's an interesting story. Like I said, this has been coming to a, 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 like a bubbling up the surface the last year or so. I've been getting a lot of people suggesting I talk about this. And I guess this is a, a serious issue, especially out West, because there are these checkerboard patterns to the property. And some people have gone and bought up all the private property, but the state, county, feds, or whoever else it might be that owns the land out there just happens to have a lot of parcels that touch at the corners. And how else do you get from one to the other? Step over the corner. Through the airspace of someone else. So there you go. Jury finds four corner crossing hunters not guilty of trespass. Angus Thurmer wrote it for the yofile.com and Greg sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I've told so many lies about my age, I don't know how old I am myself.